You shoplifted a tin of Milo? Why would you do that? Well, exactly, Stella. Exactly. Why would I? I don't remember putting it in my handbag. My, my basket was full, you know. Mm. I, I went into automatic mode. Mm. I just... I just stopped thinking for a moment. Mm. Oh, and that pick and pay manager. Oh, the scene he made. I thought, this man mm. belongs in children's theatre. <laughs> yeah. with, with London Road, what's been so amazing is just how the audience has responded. I mean, we've had got a Jewish, an elderly Jewish lady and a young Nigerian woman. And somehow their stories relate to people. You don't have to be Jewish or Nigerian to understand a family comedy yes, drama. Yes. Now that's the bathroom window. <laughs> now there lives the most gorgeous young black man. Stands there for hours just drying himself off and, <laughs> and looking at himself in the mirror, the dirty bastard. <laughs> <laughs> you are the dirty one, eh? <laughs> the audience absolutely loves it. I think that the play is a lot funnier than people expect and it's a lot more moving than people expect. I think people c come expecting something a bit of a kitchen sink drama and it's a whole lot more than that. Children, they can be so stupid. They think you're going to be around forever. I think you're just going to be old. They don't believe you when you tell them goodbye. The script first, uh, I entered it into a competition, uh, the Panzer play reading competition in 2006. So it's been about four years that it's been growing and developing. Thank you, Stella. The response has been absolutely fantastic. We've been, uh, we've had very many full houses, probably more than 80% full, and uh, you know, which is just fantastic for a new, totally new South African play. Um, to get that response is wonderful and amazing. When is your husband coming back then? I am not sure, but I'm keeping an eye on the business while he's away. Oh, is that right then? What business is that then? Import, export. <laughs> I think it, it, it's a nice fact that it's a Nigerian lady. Somehow makes it um, not, not your typical South African, black, white, we find reconciliation and healing. Both of these characters initially are not particularly likable. I mean, the, the old lady is extremely bossy, poking her nose. The Nigerian woman is extremely defensive. Um, and then they find things that they've got in common. I mean, themes that they have in common are absent men, you know, the old lady her husband has died, the Nigerian woman her husband has abandoned her. Um, so they're essentially two women alone in the world, which I think a lot of people can relate to. So, you see, less is more. Plus, this small man has a big, big, big manhood. Oh dear, 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 oh dear. Well, did they? <laughs> It says a lot. So I think particularly, you know, in terms of uh, immigrants and old people who get abandoned and forgotten and left to their own devices, I think suddenly for both of them it's like being injected with oxygen when you've been deprived. Having somebody who actually cares about you and is there for you. Who wouldn't be, want to be around me and my accommodating charm all the time, hey? <laughs> come, come, you must rest, Rosa. Rest. Shh. I'll have plenty of time to rest when I'm dead. Um, God forbid, don't talk about that. <laughs> what? Death? God forbid, don't talk like that. I'm not scared of death. <laughs> I'm fucking petrified of death. <laughs> I think that's been part of the huge appeal of the show has been the story. Um, it's a deceptively simple story. Um, it seems to be quite a linear story. I think people enjoy the fact that the show is just an hour long. Two women who meet um, and through a series of conversations um, become friends. It's, uh, it's not an epic long journey that takes place over years. It's literally six months in the lives of these two women who we come to care for very greatly by the end of the show. 
He said he'd come and visit me. Me and Stella. <laughs> <laughs>